Welcome to my channel, this is you on the go. I want to talk about Samuel Coldridge Taylor. Who was Samuel Coldridge Taylor? Well, he was a mixed race man, a mixed heritage man who lived here in England in the in the Victorian period. He lived here in England in the Victorian period. Yeah, he was born in 1875 and he died very young at the age of 37 in 1912. But he became a great composer in, in that period of history. When I was in school here in England, uh, when I went to school, um, school history didn't cover him at all. Um, even in music lessons, they didn't talk, they didn't mention anything about this guy named Samuel Coleridge Taylor. Even though I went to school in the same town that he grew up in, um, so I'm actually I was living just a few miles from where his house was. But he wasn't uh, told, um, history wasn't made known of him um, in this in this country here. But anyway, he he um, was born um, from, his, sorry, his mother was an English woman and his dad, his father was um, from Sierra Leone. He came to England to study to be a physician. Anyway, Samuel Coleridge Taylor, um, from a very young age, his, his, um, his granddad, um, who he lived with um, because his mother lived in the same house as her father and his granddad who was also of a musical background and all of her family were very musical they spotted he had some talent and he was he started to teach him the violin but over time the, the extended family realized how talented he was and they got him into the Royal College of Music which is the top one of the top uh, far as I understand music colleges here in here in England and he did very well in that he started off doing the violin but then i think he went over to be studied to be a composer and um and that's what he was known for so samuel coldish taylor actually um toured america three times one of those tours he he was received by president Roses, roosevelt in the actual White House so he was known in very high he was held in very high esteem um, to be invited by the president he his his signature piece or was Hiawatha which is like um, a, a composed composition that's based off of a poem um, and that's what made him really known um, he was known also amongst African Americans like Debuse and others because he he also what he did he he um integrated uh negro spirituals with classical music so he was able to write the scores for these negro spirituals so they could sing them using you know music sheets and so that's one of the things he was known for amongst african americans but also obviously he was, he was respected because the fact that the president invited him gained him great respect amongst um, Americans okay he Samuel Coldridge Taylor Samuel Coldridge Taylor was um, he was I think he started to get a bit of recognition when Elgar recognized him as a, a a very good talent and gave him one of his jobs so basically Elgar had this job we had to compose for some concert and because Elgar couldn't make it Elgar suggested that this young fella, very talented young fella, which was Samuel Coley Taylor, would do the actual job, and he did it. So he was recognised by notable people, and um, in in the time that he grew up in, um, you would sometimes you are uh, you would well I would ask myself what it was like for him being a young black man or a mixed man in London. I suppose when you're mixed. You're not white and you're not, you're not black, but I think in some sense, I think people see you more as a black person. And um, so one thing I understand is that his, his, his mother's uh, family really appreciated him and really helped him to get through in the music. So I could I could tell from that that there wasn't no like overt racism towards him. There was a lot of support. And the fact that his um, his granddad his um his mother's father actually allowed her to to grow up to grow up the son in his house knowing that she's had a child for a black man not only that she she wasn't married and the funny thing is her father's she was born out the same 
out of wedlock also so I suppose maybe it was a pattern but in those days it was it was frowned upon more um, and so the fact that the father allowed him or allowed her the mother I think that was um, a good a great sign of um, some sort of goodwill and there's something that I look at with people I look at their what's good sometimes sometimes we can look at the bad but what's good racism has always been around and I know that it was around then but you have to treat each person I think as individuals anyway um, he did experience some racism in the school when he was at the college and uh, but the, his teacher backed him up by saying to the young men that was teasing him that he's got more talent in his little finger than all of you put together so even his teacher was backing him would recognize his talents and supported him in the incident where racism was playing its part so we have to look at the good we have to look at the bad main thing he was able to become a top composer in Britain and I'm sure he may have, he may have had some obstacles but he did it he did it and and it's, it's a testimony to anybody that sometimes obstacles can come your way but you can still achieve what you need to achieve